You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Nick Wilson and meteorologist Ethan Foreman. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It's 645 on this Wednesday morning. I'm Nick Wilson. And I'm Ethan Foreman. And looking at this Wednesday morning, it's a foggy morning. Yeah, it's definitely a foggy morning out there. One of the foggiest we've seen in a while. And we'll continue to see that for probably about three or four more hours before it starts to uh, starts to move out of the region. But KCA United studio camera showing that fog pretty dense out there. You can barely see even those car lights out there. It's so foggy this morning, and that's going to continue to be the case across parts of the area, especially the areas you see red on your screen, where we have visibility down to zero miles in places like Wayne, Vermilion, Tacoma, Omaha, Mapleton, Denison, Ida Grove, and Orange City. So quite widespread this morning, just one mile in Norfolk and Sioux City, but it has improved for places like Sheldon and Storm Lake, but the majority of the area under that dense fog advisory until 10 o'clock this morning. We'll give you more details on when this will improve coming up. Well, the South Dakota Supreme Court is getting ready to hit the road for its October term. Chief Justice Stephen Jensen invites the public to attend a hearing that will be held on October 4th and 5th at the University of South Dakota Knutson School of Law in Vermilion. The court will hear oral arguments in four cases each morning. Each fall and spring term is held outside of the courtroom at the state capitol. Justice Jensen says the special sessions give South Dakotans an up-close look at how the judicial system works. And meanwhile, with a possible federal government shutdown just days away, local families who depend on federal programs are feeling stressed each month, around 3,000 people visit Sioux City's office for the Women, Infant, and Children program, also known as WIC. That program provides families with EBT cards to use for their food. And Kevin Grime with the Siouxland District Health Department says the government shutdown could pause recipients' access to important items like baby formula. There are some cases where infants need special formula related to some of their developmental and their physical demands. So we work with those individuals to issue the benefit so they can afford those special formulas along with regular infant formula. They just wouldn't have that as additional food items that are healthy in nature in their cupboards to be able to feed their families. Grimes says if the federal government does shut down, he believes more families will have to rely on local and state level services like food pantries, which have already seen high demand. Well, in lighter news, plenty of Siouxlanders might be looking to grab a lotto ticket this morning as the Powerball jackpot is now up to $835 million. No one has won the top prize since mid-July when a player in California won $1.08 billion. Part of the reason why the prize pool has grown so large is the odds of winning are quite small. You have a 1 in 292.2 million chance. Lottery officials want to remind you to play responsibly, and it only takes one ticket to win. Well, now it's time to meet today's Stray of the Day, and it's still Waiting Wednesday. And every Wednesday we feature a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue who's been waiting quite some time to find a forever home. This is Rocky, a one-year-old male German Shepherd Husky mix that weighs about 45 pounds. He was found on the 1600 block of West 18th Street back in late July. The rescue says he's a sweet dog that's just the right age for training, but would do best in a home with no little kids, as loud noises and too much activity make him nervous. Rocky is available for adoption now. If you've lost your pet, you're looking to adopt, or you'd like to sponsor a pet for adoption, you can visit the rescue's website at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. Rocky sure looks like a nice dog, nice name, and his coat doesn't look too thick, so maybe he could handle the temperatures we're seeing? Yeah, he might be able to handle the temperatures, but might not be able to handle this fog we're seeing this morning. Definitely quite the foggy start to the day, and we'll continue to see that till about 9 or 10 o'clock this morning until that starts to burn off as we head toward the midday hours. Our stormcast shows those clouds starting to burn off for our southwestern areas 
rise as we head into this afternoon and evening, and that will slowly move from southwest to northeast. And then by tomorrow morning, most of us seeing those mostly clear conditions, though still some clouds hanging toward Spencer, Sheldon, or Storm Lake. Areas to the southwest seeing plenty of sunshine for Thursday more clouds to the northeast but by 3 p.m. most of us seeing those clouds out of the region and then we see this stationary front that's going to be kind of just sitting there as we head into Friday could see an isolated shower pop up to our north but most of that is going to stay in southwest Minnesota 74 degrees for today morning fog and then that afternoon clearing taking place and then for tonight we'll see 52 degrees with continued clearing and mild conditions those winds still out of the east 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then we get really breezy as we head into Friday, nearly 90 degrees for that high. The record is 92, so we'll get close, but don't think we'll quite make it. But the big story is going to be those overnight low temperatures. Some of our lows could be in the 70s, believe it or not. And then we'll see those temperatures finally cool down as we head into the middle and especially the end of next week with more rain on the way. Now we turn to sports, where we've got more volleyball action from the Metro and beyond. Anthony Mitchell has the highlights right here in your morning sports wrap. Good morning, Sioux Land. There's certainly nothing like a Metro matchup with the Black Raiders of East High making the quick trip across town to Bishop Helan to take on the Crusaders last night. Bishop Helan swept the Black Raiders just four days ago. East looking to return the favor at O'Gorman Fieldhouse up one zip heading in a set two, keeping that momentum. Visitors go across the net to Olivia Menser. This one going to the bleachers. East High taking the quick lead. They're not done there either. Helan going up for the spike blocked by Holly Peterson. Junior with a timely rejection. Crusaders responding. Malaya Hacker on the far side of the net. Handling business. Rises up. Drops the hammer. Home team chiseling away at the lead. Black Raiders though bringing the heat. Mackenzie Crawford says meet me at the net and welcome to the block party. She finishes set two with a spike. East sweeps healing. Resist. Only a few minutes away. The 14-1 Hinton Blackhawks welcomed Akron Westfield into town. Westerners getting on the board first. Blackhawks kill. Turned away by Josie Jacobs. Here's an invite to that block party. Row team looking motivated for the upset. Hinton doing what they do best, teeing it up for Bailey Boovey. Vicious spike by the state's number one recruit in the class of 2026. Ashton Kavarna credit for the assist. That's her 1500th. Home team taking the lead, looking for more. Check out the nifty Nola hit by Kavarna. Crafty move by the senior, igniting a big Hinton run. 24-13 set point Hinton. Kavarna again securing the set victory. Blackhawks sweep Akron Westfield. 3-0 the final. Across the Missouri River in Nebraska, Wayne State enjoying its second straight win as number one of the Division II polls and coming off a thrilling top 10 win from Saturday. The Cats coming home for an in-state clash with Peru State. Wildcats leading the conference in kill percentage and blocks per set, staying as fierce as ever in this one. Cats taking set one. Maggie Bramer bringing it home in set two. There's a point. And how about another back-to-back -back kills for the junior? Game high, 14 of them in this one. 23-8 Cats. Wayne State. Wouldn't slow down either. Freshman Laney Kath on the outside. Cedar Catholic alum powering it to the panels on set point. Cat six set two, 25-12. And they kept finding new ways to score in this one. Set three, Allie Beersford on the serve. Count the ace for the Dakota Valley product. Wildcats hit a blistering 53.6% tonight. A new single game school record. Wayne State wins it in straight sets, 3-0. Our next stop, Sioux City West High School, where the Sioux City Metro swim team was in action, hosting the Lewis Central Titans. The Metro's back at home after competing in its last six meets on the road. Girls 200-yard medley, Grace Asaf anchors home the win for the Metros, edging out Lewis Central by two seconds to give Sioux City the win in its first varsity event. 200-yard freestyle, neck and neck right to the end. Maria McGowan wins it for the Metros, two minutes, 10.59 seconds. Asaf would win the 200-yard individual medley, 50-yard freestyles turn. It's the Metro sophomore, Natalie Petit, in a lane four, earning six points for her home team. One of her four wins in the meet, Metros beat Lewis Central 90-80. And finally, a big shout-out here. Congrats to the Lamar's Bulldogs golf team for winning the MRAC tournament, squeaking by Bishop Heelan by just seven strokes. Cole Brown-Miller shot the low round, notching a 75, while Bishop Heelan's Jack White and Blake Harzma of Sergeant Bluff Lou and both shot a 76. And that'll be all for sports. Have a good day, Siouxland. Now let's take a look at this morning's top stories. It's what you need to know before you go. Business owners and city officials in Ottawa, Iowa are expressing concerns about a massive street project that's facing ongoing delays. 
Construction along Onawa's Main Street started back in early April. The project was originally set to last 160 days, but now it's been 177 and counting. Business owners we spoke with say the construction has negatively impacted them for months, and now they're concerned the work will linger into the new year. Last night, Ottawa City Council members raised concerns that the Main Street intersections may not be big enough to accommodate large vehicles like farm equipment without damage. So we're going to have to, through the, the council, decide whether to reach out to the state or see what we have to do to post a oversized load and farm equipment detour. We had no decision making on is it a drive over curb, are we going to have out? Unfortunately, how wide or not wide the road may be, where the parking is going to be, that was absolutely not in our committee's purview. Several dozen community members filled the council chambers for the meeting. Business owners have expressed they want to see more transparency on the construction process. In the meantime, the Highway 20 project here in Sioux City is staying on course. The project got underway back at the start of May. In recent days, crews have paved ramps and highway sections. Dakin Schultz is the Iowa DOT transportation planner. He says the idea is to have all four lanes back open to traffic by the end of November, but come springtime, crews go back to work. So that's been part of this uh, process. Why we did the two-year project was so that we would have eastbound lanes back open for winter. And then next year when spring comes around, westbound will get closed down and we'll move traffic one lane each direction on the new eastbound lanes. Schultz says having all four lanes open through the winter season will hopefully allow for safer travel during snowy or icy conditions. And elsewhere, healthcare professionals in South Dakota are trying to convince more people to get vaccinated. Yesterday's conference was hosted by the nonprofit group Immunize South Dakota. It comes against a backdrop of declining vaccination rates for diseases like COVID-19, the flu, and even childhood illnesses like polio. Organizers say part of the problem stems from misinformation shared on social media, and part of the solution is to discuss vaccines with their patients. I just like to have a conversation with them to let them know about the safety profiles that vaccines are tried and tested. Um, they've been around for many years and I like to try to talk about some of those myths that, you know, that we sometimes come across to see, hey, you know, where are you getting your information? Let's talk about websites. Let's talk about information that's out there. Other providers at the conference say they've also ran into vaccines being politicized, which concerns them. They emphasize that illnesses like COVID-19, polio, and measles can affect anyone. And finally, the latest COVID-19 vaccine is starting to roll out. hy V announced yesterday the updated shot is now available at their pharmacy locations across the Midwest for patients who are 12 years and older. They say you can also get your flu shot at the same time if you're looking to get vaccinated. Check with your local pharmacy or health care provider to make sure they have the shot in stock. Well, one last look at our forecast. Is it still foggy out there? Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of improvement in spots, but still a bit foggy out there. Seeing zero miles in several locations right now, especially to our southeast, including to Kama, Omaha, Mapleton, and Denison, even down to two-tenths of a mile in Ida Grove and Vermilion, zero also in Wayne and Bloomfield, and one mile just here in Sioux City and also in Norfolk. Because of that, we do have dense fog advisories across the region until 10 o'clock this morning, but then your 999 forecast shows those highs climbing about seven or eight degrees each day until we get to the end of the week where we see breezy conditions and temps near 90 as we head into Friday. Then some rain showers possible for Saturday for the start of River Sants, dry on Sunday and Monday, and then we see more rain showers to the for the middle of the week. Foggy today and then the next few days looking pretty warm. Pretty warm. Well, thanks for watching. KCU 9 News returns this midday.